Hello everyone, I'm Kyle Glockner and welcome back to another episode of Face Off. If you're familiar with JRPGs, you might have heard of the Tales of series. They're a bunch of games that typically don't tie into each other, spanning almost every single console since the PS1, with new installments coming out to this day. Today, I want to compare two of those games, and while they aren't too different, with the exception being their plot, I think they're different enough to warrant a battle. So for today's episode, I'll be comparing Tales of the Abyss and Tales of Vesperia. Let's get started. Being that these games are so complex, the way I'm going to do this face-off is pick a category, compare the two games, and determine the winner based on the majority of smaller victories. I'll start with the gameplay. This remains relatively consistent between the two games, which is mainly just walk from place to place, take a boat from place to place, and then finally fly from place to place. There isn't much the overworld has to offer, at least gameplay-wise. Combat is the next area we can talk about. Once again, between the two games, it remains relatively the same, but there are a few noteworthy changes. The Tales games feature a pretty unique battle system, where you go into battle by colliding with an enemy, like most JRPGs, but the battle's in real time, forcing you to react and adapt to the enemy's attacks. Between the two Tales games, Tales of Asperia wins here, because of its more advanced combo system, otherwise maintaining an identical battle system in Tales of the Abyss. Now that those two are out of the way, we can start to see where they really differ. As one would expect from two different games, the stories are vastly different. In Tales of the Abyss, our protagonist is Luke von Favre, who is an amnesiac noble who gets caught up in a situation way above his head, causing him to meet our cast of characters on his journey back to his home of Batacle. Although Luke starts off as your typical snotty rich kid, you eventually learn that Luke is actually a clone of the original prince, Ash. At this point in the game, the story revolves around the group discovering why clones such as Luke are being created, as well as Luke forming his own identity not as a simple replica of Ash, but as his own person. Tales of Speria, on the other hand, follows Yuri Lowell, a former Imperial Knight who turned vigilante who originally sets off to retrieve a stolen Glacia from the Thief. As Yuri sets off to catch the Thief, he meets Estelise, a sheltered princess who tags along with Yuri on his adventure. Once again, we have our protagonist meeting our large cast of characters on his journey, and his simple quest evolves into something much larger. Between the stories, I have to go with Tales of the Abyss felt so much more rewarding to find out the mysteries behind everything that was going on in the world, and finding out motives for certain characters' actions. Finally, we look at characters. The Tales of the Abyss, our party includes Luke, Tyr, Jade, Annis, Guy, and Natalia. Throughout their journey, they all have beautiful development, with some of them becoming completely different characters from when you initially meet them. But with Abyss, I would be a fool not to mention the other equally important characters that help our party on their journey. You can really tell they took time to carefully write out each and every character in this game, making you feel for each and every one of them. And I won't lie, this game made me cry multiple times, even when I saw it coming after playing through a second time. Now as far as Tales of Vesperia goes, our party consists of Yuri, Estelle, Carol, Rita, Raven, Judith, and Yuri's dog, Repeat. I should also mention that in the Japanese-only PS3 release, the NPC Flynn is added to the party, as well as the new character, Patty. While there's a great amount of character development, it's definitely lacking in this game when compared to this. There's still great development, don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't feel as engaging as it did in Abyss. Even Yuri, our protagonist, doesn't really change too much over the course of the game. But to be fair, he's not a typical protagonist. Unlike these angsty teenagers who still need to find themselves, Yuri's already an adult who knows who he is and what he wants. So there's not much he needs to do for himself. As far as the other characters you meet on your journey, they aren't really anything too special. Even as I'm talking about the game, I can't really think of a single one that sticks out in my mind. So as far as story goes, Abyss is the winner. Overall, that's one victory for Vesperia and two for Abyss, so the winner has to be Tales of the Abyss. The story Abyss tells is one of the best in the Tales of the series, and the characters are some of the best out there. While Vesperia may have more evolved combat, in a game where 50-60% to 60 of the entertainment value is the story, it's just not enough, and that leaves Tales of Abyss as the winner. So what do you think? Abyss or Vesperia? Be sure to let me know by tweeting me at CTV goofing off using the hashtag FaceOff. Until next time, I'm Kyle Glockner, and I'll see you next time on FaceOff.